two types of random variables first one is discrete random variable and the second one is continuous random variable okay discrete random variable means from the name itself you can understand discrete means you can count the number of values a discrete random variable has a countable number of possible values say for example if i define my event is number of students or the my event is students attending a lecture number of students attending a lecture that is number of students attending a particular lecture you can count them you can count them as 1 2 3 4 5, whatever means say 10 students attended 50 students attended so like that where you can count and you can take the value that is discrete random variable okay and continuous random variable means there you cannot count in that way say for example con uh, continuous random variable takes on all values in some interval say for example if i am going to uh, measure your your height height of students of second year computer engineering okay so the height your height will be say um, it is 150 cm somebody is having someone is having 150.2 or someone is having 150.4 so like that cm it will be from say it is from minimum height is 150 and maximum height is say 1 uh, 180 cm okay so this that uh, continuous random variable means it takes value between this one any value between this 150 and 180 so it can be in decimals also or mm -hmm. simply thing is that continuous random variable if you draw a graph of that one it will be something like this okay continuous curve will be there and discrete random variable means discrete random variable means it is it has countable number of possible values okay two types of random variables one is discrete random variable that means it has a countable number of possible values and continuous random variable means it can take all the values between a given interval okay now this discrete and continuous random variable they will be when they will be arranged in a table we call that by some other name that is called as probability distribution for x if x is a discrete random variable now as an example i'll tell you first then i will explain what is written here okay now consider an example i am going to toss a coin a coin is tossed example a coin is tossed say twice a coin is tossed twice then what will be the sample space one coin is tossed twice or this will be same as two coins are tossed once this both statements are same two coins are tossed once or one coin is tossed twice okay one coin is tossed twice or two coins are tossed once both are same then the sample space will have as you know will have hh ht th and t t okay these are the sample space now here see here let x assume let x be a random variable which assumes x1 x2 x3 etc etc with probabilities p1 p2 etc this one now here i am going to define event such that suppose probability of getting getting at least one head what will be that probability of getting at least one head at least one head means there should be minimum one head okay so what will be the probability there getting at least one head will be at least one head means minimum one head so here one head here one head here also one head so out of this four three are having head so probability of getting at least one head is 3 divided by 4 i hope you remember probability of any event a is p of a is n of a divided by n of s probability of any event a is number of elements in a upon number of elements in the sample space so here i defined probability of getting at least one head so getting at least one head is the event so in that event how many are there 1 2 3 so the probability is 3 by 4 okay 
सो नाउ आई कैन राइट दिस एज पी ऑफ एक्स इज इक्वल टू एट लीस्ट वन हेड एट लीस्ट वन हेड मीन्स इफ आई गिव इट अस एट लीस्ट वन If I give it as p of x is equal to one, then I will write it as three by four. This one depends on how we are defining this. Okay, p of x equal to zero means probability of getting no head. So getting no head means what? This will come t t. So that will be one upon four. Okay. Similarly, we are writing probability of getting no tail. No tail means this will come. So when you put all that together, when you put all that x1, x2, x3, 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 and put corresponding probabilities, when you put it together, I am writing as a table. We call that as discrete probability distribution for x. Then, so when a coin is tossed twice, or when two coins are tossed once, probability or events, number of let x be the number of getting heads. So when x is zero, x is one, x is two, x is only two cases, isn't it? Because we have s is equal to h h, h t, t h, and t t. So probability of getting this head we are finding out, or the event I am defining event is number of Heads. So that is x equal to x can take the random variable x can take the values zero, one, and two. X can take the values zero, one, and two. Now I will write here p of x equal to x. P of x equal to x means p of x equal to zero. X equal to zero. This one. Then p of x equal to one. P of x equal to two. Okay, p of x equal to zero. That I will write. P of x equal to zero means when there is no head. X. What is x? X is getting a head. Okay, event x is getting a head. So when x is zero means x is zero means no head. No head means here. So it is one on four. Now probability of getting x equal to one. X equal to one means getting one head. Getting one head. This is. H T and T H. One head means out of this four, two are there. So it is two upon four. And getting two heads. Getting two heads means this one. Okay, one upon four. And I write this in a table. It is written in a table like this. Then this is called as a probability distribution. Table for or probability distribution for the variable x. Okay, then now one important property of this is that here summation of so this is if I write this as say p one, this is p two, this is p three. Okay, then summation of this p i, summation of p i means p one plus p two plus p three. All these probabilities when you add them together, always it should be it will be one. Okay, so this is the probability distribution for x when a coin is tossed twice, or when two coins are tossed once. Okay, here sum of probability is always one. For continuous case, it is probability density function. Okay, probability density function, and here let x be a continuous random variable. Then, so since it is continuous random variable, it will be always in the form of a curve. Or y is equal to f x. Here some conditions are there. This f x is said to be a random, a continuous random variable. If f x is integrable, means it should be you should be able to integrate that f x. Then f x should be greater than or equal to zero. Okay, because that is going to be the probability. So that f x should be greater than or equal to zero. The same way here. See here we have written. P of i each p of i is equal to zero. Here each p of i each probability is greater than or equal to zero. Same way here each f x should be greater than or equal to zero. And here the most important property integral a to b f of x dx. This will be equal to one. Same way in discrete case we told summation of p i equal to one. Since it was discrete, we put sigma summation, and since it is continuous, we put that integral a to b f of x dx that is equal to one, where this a to b means that x will be lying between a and b. Okay, x lies between a and b, and
and then uh, it uh, we can say it follows a continuous or probability density function and this is a property of this one which we use very usually we use this property that is integral from minus infinity to plus infinity f of x dx is equal to 1 okay so here it is minus infinity to plus infinity case then this a and b will be any value will between this minus infinity and plus infinity okay so integral this is a generalized case this integral minus infinity to plus infinity f of x dx equal to 1 and this part this is a finite case of that one integral a to b f of x dx equal to 1 so here the total integral whatever it means if i uh, denote it graphically this is if i am going to denote this minus infinity to plus infinity graphically it will be a bell curve like this it will be a bell curve that is area under this curve will be always 1 Okay, this is a normal curve. Bell curve we say B E L L bell curve. Okay, so that is probability density function. That is the total integral is always one. Then now this is the if you want to write this. See this one. Probability if I want to write probability of say 3 less than or x less than 0 is equal to say 5. Suppose x is a continuous random variable. x is a continuous random variable which lies between 3 and 5. Then this can be written as this is equal to integral 3 to 5 f of x dx. Whatever f of x comes here that function you will put here you can then integrate and get the answer. Okay. 